What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Frustrated Grad Podcast. Uh, today's episode is a special episode because I'm, uh, as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, writer Tony Hoffman, but I'm also joined by a, a friend of ours, went to school with us, human being, Allie Klein. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for coming. All right, so. Um, for anybody who is new to the podcast, uh, I will reiterate a point that I've made in the past. But the Frustrated Grad podcast is about more than just being a frustrated grad. It's about the opinions, the feelings, the thoughts, and the lives of a few people who happen to be frustrated grads. I thought it was all just about complaining about you know student loans and lack of jobs and living a depressing disappointing life post college i mean of course that's part of it because that's part of the life of a frustrated grad but we have more uh uh more to say to the world than just i'm mad (laughs) so well that is surprisingly good yeah (laughs) and and, uh, okay before we get into the meat of the show Let's talk about uh, Allie name shaming the podcast. <laughs> She's like, is it still called the Frustrated Grad Podcast? <laughs> I mean, we're we're almost ten years out from from having graduated. <laughs> so, I'm like, what? Where do you graduate next to? Like, what? What is the level of frustration? I, I guess. Mean, I mean, this I will extended, be the name of the show when we're senior citizens. <laughs> I mean, I extended it uh, beyond the initial premise because I was, I I continued to be a grad because then I was a frustrated grad student and then I was once again a grad uh, and and proceeded the life of frustration from there but the thing I said like I said to Allie on our text but we'll always be grads so it's not a status that ends per se (laughs) right (laughs) I mean sometimes I wish I could turn in uh, (laughs) my degree and get my money back but I'm still a grad I guess I could go with I'm still frustrated because my husband is still a student and he's still pursuing his bachelor's degree. So, wow. <laughs> hey, it's it, it's a lifelong process. When you stop sure learning, so yeah. <laughs> when you stop learning, you can stop being frustrated about it. But to kick off the show, that that's our our symbol to <laughs> kick off. Ignore my answering machine. <laughs> so do you do you have to turn the tape over, sir? <laughs> Your it's answering digital. machine. All right. Okay. I was worried there. Or my thought, voicemail. Better. Yeah, I thought some. Uh, I thought George Costanza was going to run in and try to switch out the tape before you heard it. Um, but you didn't hear the greatest American hero thing. So. Yeah, believe it or not, Tony isn't at home. So leave a message after the B. Where could I be? All right. That's actually one of the only Seinfeld episodes that I've watched the whole way through. And I get <laughs> How made fun of for that all the time. <laughs> yes, and it will continue on this episode. How dare you, Allie? <laughs> that I'm is. sorry. It is American I have been, I've started Curb Your Enthusiasm, though, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of... Okay, that's like, that's <laughs> like right. advanced time, Phil, so I guess yeah. <laughs> I'll give you some credit for that. I didn't start watching Seinfeld until like it was in syndication and like the reruns and stuff, so don't feel too bad. <laughs> yeah, I watched it. I mean, that's probably where I completed... Like, I've seen every episode at this point, but like when Seinfeld was on prime time, everybody else in my house was watching Martin, so I wasn't at the forefront of the uh, trend. But you were also nine. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, doesn't mean I couldn't appreciate <laughs> comedy about nothing, like the contest and what that meant. And oh, I I knew <laughs> because oh, I good. I was one to ask questions, and it's like. Wow. Like master of your domain, what does that mean? <laughs> yada yada yada. Hey, yada yada. The best part. Well, I talked about the dinner. All right, <laughs> this is not. This a is all podcast. flying over <laughs> Allison. <set. laughs> this is not a Seinfeld podcast, but I I do have a Seinfeld podcast I can recommend if you want to do a catch. <laughs> but uh, 
yeah this uh this week we're talking about things other than seinfeld uh, a lot of stuff going on in the world a lot of stuff uh, uh, a few grads might have some opinions about um, the one question that i have to ask right now is is allison dressed like a woman very, good question. Very important. Question. <laughs> Appropriate. Very what important. the uh, the latest headline I woke up to was hashtag Yes I am. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Dress like a woman. Uh, I mean, I think know? it's a mandate from uh, our, our our wonderful president, the leader of the free world. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, all the women that are responding are showing him what dressing like a woman means because they're showing pictures of themselves in their astronaut uniforms, yes. in their police uniforms, in their firefighting uniforms. So, yeah, yeah I think it, it applies to way more than what he thinks it means. Yes. Yeah, I would love if all of the uh, women staffers in the White House just walked around in astronaut astronaut suits so like well this is what you said sir i'm dressing like a woman oh did you see that photo uh that was going around from like what was it sweden or whatever like the the leader of sweden is a woman and she had all yeah. of her like uh female counterparts around her signing a document about like environmental stuff and okay. it was in direct correlation to that picture of trump signing the thing with all the guys standing around about the yeah it's uh, great timing for the yeah. <laughs> synergy right uh, but yeah, um, there's. I'm just trying to think. Like, does he mean like, like pantsuits, or does he mean I, like? I think no, I'm pretty sure specifically is outlawing I think he means like a pants. skirt or a dress. Oh. Like yeah. women should not wear pants or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. He he's of that mindset because that's well, yeah. Yeah, I I think he's looking for the anti-Hillary in his uh, for everybody in his immediate vicinity. He he wants. Uh, you may know that our president is a fan of grabbing them by the pussy. So easier access is preferred. Right. Every, like every day, like when I get on Facebook or Twitter, it, 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 I just get so, I, I even get like a little physically just sick. Like my, I, my head starts to hurt whenever I have to see like what new horrible thing. I think we lost it. They're done to destroy like international or international relations and do domestic relations. <laughs> yeah, it's make it stop. <laughs> yeah, this it's one of those situations where you say, "I'm genuinely never bored, but I wish I was." <laughs> like this is, this it's, is it's very like scary. Because he doesn't. It, it's clear that he doesn't care about breaking any laws or, you know, pissing oh, on no. the constitution. No. So I mean, so now you, you might also know that he's a, a fan of piss. If if the documentation <laughs> is to allegedly, be believed, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. allegedly. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, I I I I like w where people are taking the whole dress like a woman thing because it's it's ridiculous and mm. it needs to be uh, thrown back in his face. I was going to say, like, no wonder, like, Fox News is, like, his favorite news station. I mean, they have a lot of the same dress codes there. They have the yeah. same dress code, and they have, yeah. it's like they have a cloning machine uh, The somewhere. Fembox. Yeah. The Stepford Park. It's like, okay, blonde, you have yeah. a minimum of this height. Okay, push print. Yeah, hey, yeah we, we, we lost Megan one. Kelly, but we can replicate her. So. Right. We lost Megan Kelly, who is moving into... I mean, I guess it's daytime, so it's arguably taking, a more legitimate position uh, taking job from Tamron Hall. Yeah, um, wasn't that bullshit? Yeah. Yeah. Chicago's own Tamron Hall. Right, uh, yeah. Let's would, just, replace. just whitewash all of the Today Show. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, this is Trump's America, so you have to... Right, yeah. <laughs> you have to make... The television uh pleasing for him if he just happens to flip through at nine o'clock in the morning to nbc like oh okay i'm all right with this even though he's he, he has had his own feud with megan kelly but still the image is more pleasing to the eye i'm assuming i just i'm interested to see just how successful this is going to be because you know she's a very like a divisive you know personality yeah. and and, and, and like daytime TV, especially like on in that sort of arena in that time slot, is yeah, very sort of like soft and very, yeah. you know, co cooking segments and celebrities and stuff. And, and to have like her own political type 
yeah show it, there it, it's odd outside of the format of like something where it's like a panel discussion where it's like okay she represents a view in a group of others seems like she's just been given a spotlight like in the middle of this what was a normal like general news program but i guess i'll let's see how it turns out as long as i can still see kathy lee and hoda get <laughs> shit faced on drunk. television <laughs> drunk, box wine at 10 o'clock then yep. then uh i'm still okay but well, hey guys <laughs> The Super Bowl is uh, tomorrow. Aren't you oh, excited, it, it big just, football fans? Yes, yeah, sports ball. Me. Woo. Yes, and <laughs> it, that was a, a great transition. And <laughs> it, it reminded you. me of something. The last time that uh, Allie was a guest on the Frustrated Grad podcast, it actually many, was... Many, many moons ago. <laughs> yeah, it was like six or seven years ago. It was actually yeah. on Super Bowl Sunday. And, oh, that's right. And none of us had realized it. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. That's how much of nerds, sports fans nerds, we are. Nerds, Even nerds. with Dale, yeah. who was just like out of the three of us, he's the person who's most into sports because he actually plays basketball yeah. and stuff. But oh, yeah. none of us realized it was actually Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, we wonder why it was so empty on the streets when we took our uh, cover photo in front of the slow children playing sign. But oh, yeah. <laughs> Because everybody was inside uh, eating Super Bowl food and, and watching the game. Yeah, yeah, eating the nachos and uh, things like that. So I take it neither of you are going to be watching the Super Bowl tomorrow. So uh, I have a list of um, of some alternative programming uh, tomorrow. There will be uh, right. various uh, marathons and uh, other distractions that the uh, other networks will be airing. Huh. Uh, like yeah. the Puppy Bowl? Of, uh, obviously, that's uh, airing from uh, between. I think during um, Half from time, three to oh. th- yeah, from three to five actually. So okay. before this, Ooh, Super Bowl, right. on Animal Animal Planet. Yeah, that's uh, when walking... you record it and then keep watching it instead of the game. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'm going to be watching the Super Bowl. Um, um, the Walking would. Dead is airing a. <laughs> I would. The Walking Dead is airing a marathon from eight in the morning until four in the morning the very next day. So. Oh. If cool. you love your Walking Dead there, need to catch up on the uh, current season, uh, right. there you go. Uh, BBC America is airing a Star Trek marathon, the original show, from 9 a.m. to 11 in the evening. Cool. Captain Kirk, Spock. Uh, and the Bravo, rest. The, re- the Real Housewives of Atl- Atlanta marathon from 3 until 9. I would rather watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that's where <laughs> I'll be. <laughs> up there, up there. Oh, Zach, Maybe not. Talk. <laughs> uh, Comedy Central, uh, they're going with uh, We're the Millers, the Jennifer Aniston, uh, Jason Sudeikis. Uh, Weird pull, comedy but okay. Opus from uh, 155 to 440, followed by a South Park marathon from 440 until 10. Hey, there we go. All right, that's, yeah, that's yeah. better. Uh, do any, any of you guys get Comet TV? No. I don't Comet even know what Comet TV <laughs> is. I think it's a it's a network that I also don't get, but if you do, I, I think it's it's one of those like if you have like HD TV but you don't have cable, it's one of those like sub channels oh, okay. thingies. Oh, they one like of those a, like n- number two, like exactly two five two or whatever. whatever. Yeah. But Comet TV, they're airing a they're airing a Mystery Science Theater three thousand marathon. On oh, that's kind of, awesome! I, I would love to watch that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Um, there's a there's a streaming service. I don't know if it, it's not Comet TV, but there's one of those services that you can just get free channels. I know there's uh, one of those that has just a Mystery Science Theater 3000 channel. Oh, I guess they're oh, following nice. that. I guess they're following that uh, pattern. I think it's called Pluto TV, something like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, so yeah. it's nice to see that on something maybe that I could find on my uh cable i need dial. that but yeah esquire is going with a parks and recreation marathon from three uh in the afternoon until four in well, the morning the next day well <laughs> they are always playing parks and recreation so i don't think it's really anything yeah special. not like, different from the little bit day. that i've seen of esquire it's always parks and rec <laughs> reruns <laughs> Uh, Freeform is going with a couple of Harry Potter movies, The Half Blood Prince, followed by Deathly Hallows Part One in the evening. This could be my my chance to finally get into those movies. I tried, but it just, it, it just hasn't clicked. 
and you yes. call yourself a nerd. <laughs> He's a nerd for other things. He's too much. Yes. He's got too much else going on. Can't just lump like when, in. When you're all obsessed of with you gotta something, you got to stuff it all <laughs> in. <laughs> it's not enough uh, time the kid in the day. The kid in bowl uh, from three until five on uh, FXX. The oh. rival to the rival. puppy bowl. Right. Yeah, okay. it started four years ago, I think. See, now I feel so, like they should just put the puppies and the kittens together. Now that would be like this, more like the Super Bowl. It's kind of like the Army Navy game. They It'll be more Navy. bloody. <laughs> no, yeah. they're little babies. They wouldn't hurt each other, really. No. You, you, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that one bad boy in a group of kittens. He's going to be the, the rebel. <laughs> but yeah, kid, kitty bowl, yeah. that sounds more of my alley. And uh, there are there are more and more and more different uh, alternate uh, programming uh, choices right. there on almost all the networks. So I'm not gonna not gonna go through them all, but those are just some of the notable ones. I mean, I know that like you know marathoning stuff when you're up against a big television event like the Super Bowl is waving a thing. the white flag, kind of. But do you think that like that's they're also trying to incorporate like so binge watching of like a Netflix or like an HBO you know uh, kind of thing? Yeah, that's you know, usually we... my type of choice. Yeah, yeah like yeah. so binge watching is like a big thing now. So it's like cable trying to get us back into paying for cable, like with <laughs> trying yeah. to do like marathon things. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird because it's like. They want to pull you away from those things where you can binge whatever you want, but it's like, well, if you can't beat them, join them. Let's just play a yeah. marathon of this this thing they like. Right, like everybody loves Harry Potter, right? We'll just play the shit out of that. It's more Harry Potter. Yeah, you know what's great about Harry Potter is uh, the fact that it's a never-ending what fourteen-hour story. That's the way people like to consume it. Not on the, not on demand. <laughs> Like mm, that that sounds more like a chore than a uh, yeah. With all the some of the good stuff edited out and you know yeah. commercials. And I mean, I'm wondering how yeah. much it, they actually have to take out of Harry Potter. I wouldn't be the expert, but I, I'm assuming the later there's no ones nipple get a more. Uh, exposure or anything like that. Like, oh, Hermione, We're put your clothes. Nude in front of <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you guys excited, uh, at least for the Super Bowl halftime show this year? Uh, Lady Gaga, Gaga, gogging it up, gogging if it you will. Um, I guess job. I would like to see what her outfit's going to be, because that's always pretty legendary. But uh, I don't know. I, I play a lot of Lady Gaga at the weddings that I DJ. <laughs> and that's Mula. pretty much the exposure face. that I get. So, But are you playing anything new from Lady Gaga? Well, no, not really. Exactly. The newer stuff... <laughs> Is not quite as dancey, I want to say. I don't know. I haven't really gotten yeah. around to hearing all of it, but yeah, it's a uh, weird. No cuts from the the Tony Bennett Lady Gaga <laughs> duet album. No, not unless we've got like a really diehard fan who wants that to be like her first dance or something. But <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I thought that was a weird pull. I'm like, oh, Lady Gaga. I is it what 2007 mm -hmm. or whenever she came out? It just feels like that's like one of the most. The, one of the odder choices like even somebody like prince when they had him perform was like okay he's he's, he's got not a whole at the catalog yeah he's just... not at the forefront of music but he can has a deep catalog to pull from but it's like and he's a talented musician yeah it's like you pull lady gaga it's like okay what is her single currently right now, yeah, it's, it's like not... okay we have one to one and a half albums of songs that people would want to hear so it's, it's a strange time to be picking her, but you know. What were some of uh, what were some of you guys' favorite uh, uh, halftime performances in, in the the the, I guess oh, the few that maybe history. I've watched? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Mm. Last like, year we had the uh, glorious uh, Coldplay Bruno Mars Beyonce nope. uh, show. <laughs> Yeah, Pass. like speaking of, <laughs> yeah. like being out of touch. Like, hey, oh well, I mean, who can forget the thing. the Janet Jackson Justin Timberlake uh, debacle? I mean, I I was watching that with my mother and my sister in yep. 2004, and I remember when and that did they vomit their nachos. <laughs> no, no, but when when that happened, when she, when he, uh, Justin Timberlake pulled like that that part of her like top, like I didn't say anything, and I was hoping that like nobody noticed. <laughs> what the hell had happened and like nobody really didn't say anything and kind of like moved on from that but i knew exactly what the hell happened and i remember like i think i went on like the internet on my dial-up modem and yeah 
saw it like oh yeah people people they noticed that she broke oh, the yeah. internet before breaking the internet was a thing yeah. yeah it was the boob that was so powerful that it even changed radio <laughs> she doesn't make any sense yeah but, but 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 do you guys even like remember like what happened before that because I, I remember it was like the last time they let mtv produce it okay. and i think what was it like it's too edgy God. It wasn't. It was. It was Justin Timberlake, and it was like Puff Daddy, wow. or who was? I guess it was P Diddy at the time. Who can keep <laughs> yeah. up with that? Who can keep? And they, they were just. It was a pretty shitty show up until that point. And Janet Jackson performed a little bit. She, could, she performed a little bit because she she had a new album that was coming out. Okay. In a month or two after that, and then that happened, and uh, yeah, uh, the radio industry uh, changed and changed a little bit with the uh, FCC. Um, yeah, I think that was the beginning of the stuff. exit of. Howard Stern from the radio. Oh yeah. So it's it was weird, and it is it's odd that in all of that that the focus was on Janet as if she was the only one responsible for that. It's like, well, it's Justin Timberlake's song. The, the lyrics go, "I'm gonna have you naked by the end of this song." <laughs> this song. And he pulled. Like, and he, yeah. he, he did Not it right on cue. No. <laughs> yeah, like okay, so he wasn't involved in that. He had no knowledge of it. Sure, <laughs> it, it only is the most appropriate this piece thing. of material that's designed to break away. <laughs> yeah, like okay, it's that well, was I, all jam. <laughs> Her boob I, forced I mentioned... itself out of its encasement. <laughs> I mentioned the the halftime show because uh, I, I have like a, a CBS uh, Sports dot com has like a list of like the all of the fifty halftime shows ranked and like the the worst was that Coldplay Bruno Mars Beyonce one from last year. Yeah, really bad. Yeah, and uh, right uh, at number forty nine they have the Black Eyed Peas from twenty eleven. I do not remember this I, one. I, I have no recollection of that because the thing like being the. Uh, the non-sport fan i typically hear about these performances and if anything interests me enough i'll go back and watch it on youtube or something so like the majority of these i have no knowledge of <laughs> yeah. like um, if i heard black eyed peas performed and it was great and no nah, i still don't care about the black eyed peas <laughs> moving on with my life yeah, I think the last one I tuned into was 2012 when Madonna. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I and then I, I just wanted that. to see, like, oh, oh, is Madonna still, like, a thing? And, uh, <laughs> I mean, she's. Yeah. yeah. 50, she was in her mid 50s at yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah now, instead of choosing Madonna again, they just go with Madonna Light. So, yeah. there you go. <laughs> uh, do you guys remember Tony Bennett and Patti LaBelle from 1995? <laughs> Yeah. Why? No, no, not, not <laughs> really. Uh, I don't recall that at all. Uh, in two thousand, um, yeah, two thousand, Phil Collins, Christina Aguilera, Enrique Iglesias, and Tony Braxton for the Super Bowl thirty four halftime show. Sounds like something worth watching. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that, it's a pretty eclectic group of. Yeah, I think in ensembles, people. it's one of the better ways to do it outside of like the Coldplay thing, but like. There's no one name now that would pull me in if I was not watching the game. It's like, oh, yeah, there's this one person performing? Sure. It, like, I like the Grammy approach to, like, performances, how the Grammys will do, like, these just mashups of different types of groups and different genres. Look, they're so different. Let's put them together and yeah, see I would what happens. Yeah, I prefer something like that, like the, like the famous uh, Imagine Dragons and Kendrick Lamar collaboration. I like to see things like that, that on that was great. Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah, that that 2000 Super Bowl. That was the the Rams and the Titans. That great ending. Okay. Uh, I, I know you guys. Said I'll it. take your word for <laughs> it. Talking about so yeah. Uh, do you guys remember the Blues Brothers, James Brown and ZZ Top from 1997? No, but Not kind of. <laughs> I, I don't remember it, but that that sounds interesting to have. A fictional group as one of your halftime performers. It was produced. Cool. It was produced by uh, the Oscar Meyer company. <laughs> That's interesting. They're I they're known for it their must great have been performances. Around the time where the Blues Brothers 2000 like came out or something. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah because everybody <laughs> loved the Blues Brothers 2000. Yeah. 
Well, John yeah. Goodman. You get John Goodman. That's all. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this, it, it kicked off with like a, a fake Fox News report about Elwood Blues escaping from the Illinois State Penitentiary. Okay. So the whole thing was basically just a sort of like promo for the movie. Okay. I mean, uh, much I wouldn't mind something like time. that in present day. Like, why why can't we have like the Lonely Island perform at the Super Bowl halftime show or yeah, Tenacious D or somebody like that? <laughs> I would too. In nineteen, I would too. Actually, yeah. in 1998, The Temptations, Smokey Robinson, Martha Reeves, and the Vandellas, Queen Latifah, and Boys to Men. I think I, I vaguely remember. Seems like a pull for those older groups, but I guess it was like old meets new. That's interesting. Yeah, I was like, okay, it's a Motown theme, and then exactly. wait, you yeah. threw me off there. I don't. Yeah. I mean, Boys <laughs> to Men, Motown, Philly. So I guess. Oh, it, uh, I, yeah. Queen Latifah is the 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 fly in the ointment of that one, I guess. Yeah. But it's still I'm gonna like... read. Uh, I'm gonna read the little thing they have here. Uh, everybody loves to, da- to, to everybody loves to dance when Motown comes out at weddings. Isn't that right, Allison? Yes, it is. But in a Super Bowl, <laughs> but in a Super Bowl where, where John Elway finally came up a winner, nobody remembers this thing. The Temptations, at, at least what's left of the original members, Smokey Robinson, are they're all timeless. But somebody should have left Martha Reeves and the Vandellas back in Detroit, like a heat wave. More like hot flashes. That's kind of mean. Yeah. You gotta love those. <laughs> you, you gotta love those boys to men, though. Back in their '90s heyday, doing uh, doing some Motown Philly. But wait, no, end of the road. Come on, oh. that would have been perfect. Yeah, there's certain happen? music that's not fit for like a football audience. It needs to be like These high two, energy stuff. Yeah. These men smashing into each other. And, yeah, like you know, <laughs> <laughs> like people aren't snapping their fingers with. Their greasy nacho fingers. They can't. They can't even snap their fingers. But, but like, what does that tell you about like that that sort of like society in like the mid to late eighties? How different things were, where you could have something as as kind of tame and kind of quaint and, and kind of like not as sort of like in your face and you know like it's like something that we would have now with you know something like 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 a rap or a hip hop sort of group or like a mm-hmm. or like like something a little bit more controversial like you had this like an old like like the temptations and i mean it's more Man eclectic and, and it Tony shows, Bennett. shows a more of a, a diversity of thought on the part of people booking but there's still an element of knowing your audience like right, right? Like that's that's what a DJ does. They have to choose, yeah, things that everybody is gonna know yeah. on a mass scale. So I all don't... the demos, right? Yeah. That's the problem with like doing such promotion and you, all the production that goes into it, because you can't like if things are going bad and the performance is not catching the people's attention. It's like, oh, well, you can't switch that stuff on the fly. So yeah. like when it goes bad is the is one of the things that appeals to me like i think this could be terrible maybe i'll check it out that's, you want to see a train wreck you're yeah statistic. so that's that's <laughs> part of the appeal to me for me maybe i'll check out lady gaga because if she starts out saying like let's hear one from my new album like, all right let, yeah <laughs> like i don't really need to see you like out. just at the piano yeah. doing a ballad like yeah. uh, just do poker face yeah <laughs> dance yeah. do something yeah uh, so that, that i mean just a the, thing to get my attention can we get the hologram of michael jackson or something come on <laughs> yeah like like with the technology we have at our disposal now we could just have anybody perform at the super bowl let's have elvis <laughs> michael jackson tupac and james <laughs> brown yeah uh, ludwig dude. van beethoven <laughs> beethoven damn it yeah all okay, right sure <laughs> uh, but yeah th- that's that's where the future of a uh, super bowl halftime shows should be it's just like like everybody votes on their favorite artist, dead or alive, and and the ones with the most votes. That's who's performing. Do you want some uh some interesting Super Bowl tidbits? Sure. Some quick facts and trivia. Yeah, lay it on me. I need something to impress people with <laughs> oh. <laughs> Monday morning. Like I didn't I watch the game, but party. here's this. <laughs> Eight million pounds of guacamole is consumed on Super Bowl Sunday. Did you guys know that? No, but are we going to have that same amount since we're getting like blocked on the avocados or whatever I mean, from Mexico? We're going to have it, but it's going to cost danger. three times as much. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta have that tariff. Uh, 
Yeah, the the guac tax is coming, so maybe those statistics will change. It's like yeah. a, there's yeah. several swimming pools full of guacamole. Yeah. <laughs> Great for your skin, I hear. <laughs> it is. Uh, That's probably the only 14. time I'll uh, use it because I, I I'm not a fan. Ah. Uh, really? It doesn't it doesn't have I'm, like a distinct a, a, dis, a distinct enough taste for me to really hate all that much. Th- that's one of the things. Like I'm I'm I mean I, I may be weird like that, but. Like texture and taste combinations really throw me off. Like, to me, guacamole is like, I mean, if it's done well, it's it's okay. But I need a lot of stuff to dilute the the avocado ness of it because I I just I don't like the texture or the taste of avocado. It's like eating flavorless mayonnaise, and it, it doesn't appeal <laughs> to me. You are the most neurotic non-Jewish person I've ever met. <laughs> well, it's how presumptuous of you to assume I'm not Jewish. Do you see the way I'm wearing this hat on my head? I don't, actually, because I can't see it. <laughs> well, take my word for it. It is quite far back. I'll uh, back you up. Yes, it's true. Uh, uh, 14,500 tons of chips are eaten along with that guacamole each year each super bowl sunday okay we'll swap out uh the guac for salsa and i'm i'm on board (laughs) cool of the top 10 most watched american television programs of all time nine of them are super bowls which is is just so disappointing (laughs) (laughs) what were you expecting the oscars or something (laughs) i i would hope would would be like most watched uh, show of all time, finale of Downton Abbey, and then maybe number 10 on the list of Super Bowl. I, I've lost all faith in humanity. Sopranos. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> MASH. I think MASH is still one of those top ones. It hasn't been beaten. Over 700,000 footballs are produced annually for official NFL use, and 72 of them are used for the Super Bowl. And how many That's of a lot those of pick are skins. deflated? Only Tom Brady and the Patriots now. Exactly. Topical football. <laughs> yeah, topical for what? <laughs> four years ago? <laughs> I'm on top of it, guys. It is the second most watched sporting event in the world. More than 100 million people worldwide watch the Super Bowl every year. In fact, uh, the Super Bowl in 2010 unseated the MASH series finale as the most watched show in television history there you go. with over yep, with over 106.5 million watchers. I don't understand the appeal to people outside of the country. I mean, obviously there's people who are, are like Amer- America-phobes or whatever you want to call it, or they're just interested in American culture, but like, who do you root for if you don't live in the country? Like, you just pick the team that has the outfit that you prefer. Right, let's go blue like, guys. I guess maybe they can know, but maybe they can, you know, I mean, research like, okay, I well, mean, nobody really wants Patriots season, to yeah. win because they <laughs> all, they're always in it. Like, you know, yeah. maybe they want to root for the underdog or something. So everybody's going to say yeah. go Falcons. <laughs> yeah. And you have the, the whole like armed forces network and, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah I assume that there's some like interest of, yeah, I hear the the oh, people of the Dubai are quite so. fond of Falcons, so I guess that's who they would root for. Uh, but yeah, do you guys know how much? Uh, we would take a guess as to how much one thirty second commercial costs at the Super Bowl. This is like three million dollars or something. I, were, I hear the amount goes up all the time. Yeah, I'm gonna say five mil. Ooh, ah, well, both of you are uh, a little above it. Uh, okay. Zach was the closest, uh, two point eight million. All right. All right. What do I win? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you win a bag of Doritos. All right. I wonder how much their commercial will cost this year. <laughs> that was one of the, the things other- that I do make sure to check out after every Super Bowl. It's like, oh, how, what are those commercials um, like? Yeah, most interesting commercials. Although now they feel like, like they get leaked even before. They air them during the week on like, so the internet. Weird. Yeah. So what's yeah, the point of... <laughs> it, I can it, watch them all now. Yeah, it's yeah. weird because it's like... I saw like a bunch of like uh, YouTubers were doing like reactions of like the Transformers Super Bowl trailer. It's like, well, it's not a Super Bowl trailer anyway. It's it's just a trailer. Yeah. Like when they re-air it during the Super Bowl, it's not going to be special. Right. I guess nothing special nowadays. No matter if they tried to keep it on lock with leaks and everything, people would have known like 
they would have had like the storyboards of these commercials. Like people, somebody would have sn- snuck and taken photographs of all that yeah. stuff. So, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna gonna we're gonna uh, I'm gonna ask you guys a couple of uh, Super Bowl uh, trivia questions. Yeah. Uh, I'll just I'll just do three of them. I'm ready. Keep this quick. Okay. Okay. I'm as ready uh, as I'll which, ever be. You football experts, you. Uh, which which team won the the first Super Bowl? No uh, idea. The, take a guess. The the Chicago <laughs> Irish. <laughs> the Chicago. See, now you're not even trying. <laughs> I have no idea. Allison. Uh, no way. I have no. I know it was in the '60s, but that's all I know. <laughs> it was the Green Bay. The Green Bay Pack. Oh no shit. Okay. Well, don't yeah. tell my roommate because she will. Um... <laughs> Rub it in your face because she's from Wisconsin. So, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to help you guys with the, you know if, if you can you know if you can talk about how much of a football expert you guys yeah. are with these so, questions. All right, I'll I'll write that down from anecdotes that I can pull out at special moments. <laughs> uh, which player has won the Super Bowl MVP uh, three times? Uh, I don't know, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good guess, but no. Okay. Hingle McCringleberry. Hingle right. McCringleberry. What position right. did What position did he play, Zach? He was uh, left field. <laughs> left field. Striker. <laughs> the answer is Joe Montana for the 49ers back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Broadway Joe. I knew that. Right. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> what and and because you guys are doing so poorly, I'll end with this question. Uh, what is the name of the trophy for the winner of the Super Bowl? Heisman. I think that's college. Right sport, but wrong uh, <laughs> level. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I don't. Know. <laughs> it is the Vince Lombardi. Oh, uh, I've heard yeah. that. I know okay. that. The, the head coach of the 1966 uh, Packers that were the first team to win the Super Bowl. Okay. Uh, so did the trophy have circle. no title when they won it? Uh, I assume they got some sort of trophy, but it wasn't called the Vince Lombardi Trophy. You're right. All right, so yay, football. I mean, <laughs> I'll be the only one knowing All what's right. happening. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey. Hey, uh, here's something that I'll assume you guys may be uh, uh, knowledgeable in the Doctor Who. Uh, How Peter dare Capaldi. you stereotype me like that? <laughs> Is, Peter, did you see the Doctor Capaldi, Who the, figure behind me? The current, <laughs> the current Doctor, number 12, he's not going to be returning at the end of the current uh, season, season 10. Why? So, I'm heartbroken. Air Harper. What, what did you What did you think of him? What, what do you think of him as the current Doctor? Dude? Well, being yeah, that yeah. I have not even finished his season, I guess it's, he's be on his second season now. I I lost interest after Matt Smith uh, left the show, and not even in the sense that like I, I hated this new guy. Matt Smith. Yeah. The, that that was the thing for me. It's like not even that I loved Matt Smith so much and that his changing took me off. It was just on a decline to me, like from the moment he took the role. Really? Yeah, like David Tennant his- was always my favorite. And I liked the fact that the universe was so connected and that they would mm-hmm. run into characters over again. But then it seemed to take like a hard stop when they went to Matt Smith. And it didn't, I, didn't I seem liked, to have broader connection. I like the, the the first season that Matt Smith was was there in season. I think it was season five. I I thought that the episodes were were, were strong and like and emotional, but I I didn't thought it got progressively worse after that. Yeah, and it's it's a thing with Doctor Who. I guess it kind of goes counter to how most British shows work. It seems to be like a lot of episodes per season, and they. They seem to run out of ideas. There's always like multiple yeah. filler episodes where you could take it or leave it, and you wouldn't really miss out on much. Yeah. And uh, like like uh, like Capaldi, like he's not the only one that's going to be leaving. Stephen Moffat, the, uh, the 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 current showrunner for the show, who's been in charge since Matt Smith, like he he announced that he was leaving 
uh, about a year ago. And like, I, I think that's, to okay. me, that's more significant. That's more significant than Capaldi leaving. Cause I, I just feel like they, they just need like a new, yeah, a, do- the, a new a direction. Of fresh air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would like you to see Dr. a different Who, take. Uh, I do not. I've been meaning to get into it, but uh, we've been doing like all of the Star Treks, me and my husband. So okay. we're, on, oh, we're currently on Voyager. So <laughs> I, I got into like, I, I went through all the, the next generation episodes with the, within the past couple of years because uh, BBC America airs them and now they're airing Voyager. So now I'm getting, I'm starting up with that now. So uh, I feel like I'm, I'm, I, I finally understand with all the yeah. trickies that you talking about. I know it's really hard <laughs> to choose between Picard or Janeway being my favorite now. So, oh. so yeah, I, it, it, Star Trek is never something that I got into. To me, I just looked at it as the show my aunt watched because my aunt, was always watching Star Trek when I would go over there. And so when it would come on when I was younger, like mm-hmm. after watching something else on WGN or whatever okay. was on. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would like try to get into it, and it was just like over my head at the time. Like yeah. I liked Will Wheaton, <laughs> but <laughs> after that, I was just kind of like, yeah, no. But now as an adult, I, I do. I must say, I really enjoy. I understand it. it. It used to come on like Sundays or something. Right? Yeah. It was like it yeah. was like a syndicated show. Well, the thing yeah. is, it's like every time you'd flip around, it would be like because they overlap on their years of airing, so it would be like, oh, Next Gen is on, but now Deep Space Nine is on, but now Voyager is. <laughs> it's like where the hell is so much Star Trek on TV right now? Yeah, I feel and like now there's none. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, about is, to be, there's one coming yeah. this year. Yeah. Right. On CBS.com, I think. The, yep, yep. The, which yeah, is yeah. a mistake. They need to stop trying to sell that thing. Just put it on TV. Just, just uh, but the good fight, the good white, good white spinoff is starting up next week or the week after on I CBS.com. I can't com. wait. Yeah. I'm this, interested because uh, Rose wife. Leslie at Egret is going to be on <laughs> The bad husband. Bad mistress. All right. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So, I'm excited. so who would you who would you like to see take over for uh, for P- Peter Capaldi as as number thirteen? I guess Idris Elba. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it, people always want to put him in some. Uh, I have no idea. I don't. There's not like anybody who I'm looking at. Like, okay, you look like you would uh, look yeah. good in a blazer. Who's a, who's a hot young <laughs> British actor? Yeah, who looks good James in a blazer McAvoy. with a... No, he's Scottish. Um, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I uh, Peter Capaldi have... is Scottish. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> other uh, then I'll stick with UK James people. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't there's know. a big there's a big push for a for a first female doctor. Right yeah, now. why not? Like um, you you tried an, another old man and uh, people lost interest, so shuffle mm-hmm. it up. If you can regenerate into any person uh, just randomly, why wouldn't it happen to be a woman every now and then? Yeah. Uh, Haley Atwell, who was uh, Agent Carter, she's uh, you know, she's she be, would be down for it. If hey, I, I'll sign off for that one thousand so percent. I love Haley Atwell. Yeah, I mean, and look at I mean, look at that. Look at your enthusiasm. I mean, you're, yeah, you're you're like, on board. I mean, I'd just be excited for anything with Haley Atwell. Her her episode of Black Mirror was excellent. And I loved Agent Carter. Um, Didn't love Conviction, the show that she's doing on ABC. Just, right that now. was just like a mistake, isn't the she? Like playing an American boring in procedural. Show? Yeah, she's a, she's she's like an American who was like the the daughter of like. I don't know if it was like the president or something. She was like, she's like a party girl, and then yeah. this is her redemption as being yeah. like. Yeah, and now she's she's running addiction. some some team that's like helping like people who Social are un- unlawfully. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, network it, TV. Yeah, that that was a mistake. Yeah. Ending Agent Carter was a big mistake. Speaking of network TV, uh, did any of you any of you guys see Powerless, the new sitcom on uh, NBC about a. Uh, what was it about the group of people that? Uh, yes, it it's a weird premise. They're basically I saw it, but the premise is hard to explain. Yeah, they it's in the world of DC Comics where there's superheroes and villains fighting, but these are just regular humans who work at it was Wayne Security, so they yeah. work at a, they make products to help the public. Uh, in this world of superheroes, so it's, because the world is the, the city is always getting destroyed and people are yeah. always being inconvenienced by like the the superheroes Buildings and the falling villains. Apart. Like, oh, that's a funny premise. Yeah. Then yeah, yeah. okay. It's, it's a sitcom, a single camera. Yeah, because there's like a 
a Marvel Comics equivalent of that. It's like called Damage Control, and that comic is just about the people who clean up after superhero fights. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> technically what ends up be, being the case on Agents of Shield, also. Right. Yeah. But. Yeah. But Nessa Hudgens is is the uh, star. Yeah. Oh, Disney. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's weird that it's not on ABC with her being mm-hmm. the lead of it. But uh, um Danny Pudi from uh, Community. Community. Abed is on there. Ron Funches, very yeah. funny comedian. So I saw it. Um you know, pilots are always a different story than the series of It's whole, hard but, to judge based on the pilot. Yeah, but unless just, it's just god awful. Yeah. And this one, it wasn't god awful, but it wasn't something it was fine. that made me like guarantee that I'm, I'm always gonna uh, revisit this. It's not like gonna be my first choice of viewing sure. when it comes on. I feel like I have to watch the second episode to yeah. see like where because like they they shoot those pilots like month like months in advance. Yeah, before they do, like, the, the second, second episode could have a yeah. completely different cast. And exactly. Yeah. It's like oh, there's like. Okay, uh, Vanessa Hudgens has been replaced by Ashley Tisdale. <laughs> Nobody's mentioned it. Is this, is this bothering anyone else? It was uh, long, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, so yeah. I thought that like the the, the show, like like you mentioned, like Allison mentioned, it's, it's a funny premise. I like some of the jokes and stuff. I just yeah. How do you build on that? Like, what's gonna sure, keep you coming sure. back? I'm mean, I mean, just kind of like thinking of like, is there enough here for me to like, you know. Well, the thing is, have you guys ever seen the show Better Off Ted? Uh, Maybe I know of it, yeah. Okay. That that was like 10 years, 10, eight, nine on ABC. Yeah, it was one of those shows of, like, I feel like ABC has so many of these now, but it was one of those shows that, like, it had, I guess, a decent following. It had two seasons. But like the people who like go back and revisit it, uh, really like it. Portia de Rossi was on that show. Yeah, so th- the Powerless gives me a-, a lot of vibes that remind me of that because like Better Off Ted was similar concept. They weren't like in a world of superheroes, but it was like a quirky office comedy that had like no limitations as far as like there was supernatural stuff going on. This company, it was just like a big. A global conglomerate company that they just made all kinds of products so they would make like death rays and different weird like crazy experiments <laughs> so that like powerless remind me a lot of that so i could see where they could go if they get into the characters and, and like build up the attachment there but so i'll check it out one thing that does bother me about it is like it's a it's pulling from the characters of DC comics, but it's not in the, like the superhero universe of like the flash and arrow and all those. Oh yeah. Shows. I'm kind of yeah. excited for, um, Legion that X-Men. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. One that's coming that's out. getting pr- some pretty good reviews. I'm, I'm looking yeah, forward that to one looks really yeah. good. That starts this month, right? Yeah. I think next week. It starts soon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Cause I've seen the commercials over and over again while watching like even back from when they were doing the People versus O.J. Simpson is when they started showing those yeah. commercials. And then I was watching Atlanta. kept showing. I was like, when is this show going to start? Yeah. So yeah, um, Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza. Is yeah, I mean, I'm excited for that. So, And I think that's supposed to be connected with the movie universe of the X-Men, which they have so much trouble doing juggling their own timelines i'm wondering if yeah. this will ever yeah, actually be connected idea. right i kind of wish it was just a standalone because like the premise like the 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 schizophrenia and whatever like yeah. makes him able to have different powers right so or like his different I think uh, so. yeah his yeah. different personalities have the different powers so like i feel like that they, they could do so much with that oh yeah that's... and it could just be its own thing it don't, you don't have to like really bring in like i don't know yeah. All the like, other X Men characters. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it like bogs it down. Wolverine. Yeah. More Wolverine because we need more uh, Wolverine. I mean, like, I have like a the, fever the whole... and it cures more Wolverine. <laughs> Snicked. Like, like the new like Logan movie. I mean, I, I'm interested in just like to see like how how they're gonna like end this whole series, but uh, like yeah, I, let I, it finally I, be rated R. Exactly. Like, I'm, 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 a, I'm a little fatigued with the whole 
Hugh Jackman of it all, so I'm, I'm kind of happy to see it. I mean, I never really checked out the previous Wolverine movies because that's the thing. The Wolverine, is, the second one, is actually it's it's pretty good, but I've heard the first that, one is so terrible. It's yeah. Insane. I've heard that because it was like it was one of those things where it's like I was kind of excited, but then I could kind of see the writing on the wall at the first Origins movie. So like I'll wait to see what people say about it. And it was so bad I just never uh, decided to check it out. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to watch. It. Yeah, <laughs> you can. Yeah. What What are the handfuls of uh, shows that you, uh, Allison, that you that you look forward to watching each week? Like, like what are the Oh man! Well, <laughs> uh, I've definitely got on the the sappy family drama. This is us. Oh, uh, I've seen yeah. that. It reminds me of that show, Parenthood. Yes, it's, it's, it's kind of a perfect the, replacement for Parenthood. Okay. Yeah, I think TV needs a show like that. I've yeah, never checked on it the out. You know? yeah. um, and I just I'm a really big fan of Milo Ventimiglia. Um, I I never really watched yeah. Gilmore Girls, but that's where he pretty much most people would know that's where he's from. But I only he's know in... from Heroes. <laughs> oh, and Heroes, yeah, I guess I never really watched Heroes. I watched yeah. the British uh, kind of almost version of that called Misfits. Oh. You guys know uh, about Misfits? I've, I've heard of it. That, yeah, that was really good. Misfits. The problem with that is like like they killed like a major character every season and then it was yeah. just like it's a different show like every right. season almost yeah i feel like yeah they they kind of made it too much like skins which was that like teen drama where it would okay. be like there's two seasons per like the same cast but then it would like go Switch. on from there so yeah. um so yeah. yeah so i've been watching this is us and and crying getting that out every week <laughs> right. um and like i said we've been doing a lot of voyager um but i've i've started young pope the the hbo series with jude law as okay. the Pope. Yeah. um and I've i really like that. that okay um, it's kind of weird and surreal um and i'm only on episode three i think they're they're like about six in and they keep calling it a limited series not like a regular series so i don't know if it's just gonna be one season or that's what. one of those cop-outs where they they say like okay they want to get that, uh, that mini series emmy number right yeah that's totally what it is um yeah, but jude like... law is the perfect like asshole in it to be the pope yeah like, that's what i was gonna okay. say like like is the show like about him? Just he's the pope and he's doing like these shady things and like well, yeah. well he's the pope. You can't criticize him. Right. Well, it seems like they're just they're trying to figure out like how he would have gotten like elected or whatever, chosen or whatever. Uh, it seems like there's just like something going on like beneath the scenes there. Um, but I haven't gotten to the reveal yet. So. Oh, so yeah. So it just starts out with him as the Pope and, like, the mystery is how he got the, there? The, the yeah, smoke it's like, comes out uh, of the chimney or whatever. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, he's been declared Pope and, like, the first two se- two uh, episodes are kind of about him, like, trying to figure out what he's going to say for his first address. Okay. And um, he has to bring in Diane Keaton, who was, like, a nun that, like, raised him because he was an orphan. Yeah. Um, mm. So she's, like, his, like, right-hand person. Um, mm. I don't know. It's It's interesting. I like it. I might check that out. But yeah, like the, I f- I feel like I'm still in limbo of like getting back into my weekly shows, like like the DC your shows have finally come back. Your Arrow came back. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm still I, I still haven't got back into those. I think I watched the first episode of Flash that came back. I've been consistently watching Agents of Shield every week. Just it's weird that like. There's always the battle between Marvel and DC. I feel like DC is winning on TV, but they're so oversaturated that it's. I think it's starting yeah. to to go on the decline because yeah, it feels like a chore to like if I were to watch all of those CW uh, superhero shows every week, it just would feel like an assignment. Like I. I have to consciously think like, okay, maybe I'll try to catch up yeah. on Legends of Tomorrow. I feel like that's their thing, though. Like, okay, so my husband is a big comic book nerd and reads a lot of stuff, too. Mm-hmm. And, like, he'll tell me he has to buy, like, these one-offs of other series because it's, like, woven in somehow. Yeah, it's like, so, like understand. Something. Yeah. yeah, you have to, like, read something, like, a title that you don't normally read because it pertains to what you do read. So I feel like that's what they're doing with these shows, too. Yeah, but that's one of the things that turned me off about comics. Like, I heard about how great the the Marvel event Civil War was. And it was like, oh, let me buy the Civil War comic book. Like, oh, no, there's like 50 of them. It's yeah. like every character has their own little section of the story. And then this feeds into this other person. Like, well, I don't read 
Wolverine yeah. comics. I read Spider Man. Well, well Sp- Spider Man did this one thing in the Wolverine issue, and it's critical to his next issue. Like, yeah, oh, exactly. Like, you, I, you give I, me a roadmap be, for this stuff. Before Civil War came out uh, last year, I, I bought like the uh, on Amazon. I bought like the actual like hardcover the edition of like of it. Yeah. exactly for like for like fifteen bucks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the only way it. I've checked out comics is like getting the the graphic novel versions where they just put the volumes get, together. Get all the issues. The together. trade paperbacks. Guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that's the proper. Thing. That's the lingo. <laughs> Let's get it right, okay? Yeah, that's the thing where whenever I walk into a comic book store, I just feel like out of place. Like, oh, I'm not in the, <laughs> the world. It's like they're in the back, like playing like card games and stuff. It's like. Like, You're just there to look at the figurines. It's fine. Yeah, it's just it's okay. like, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you people live <laughs> They're here? They're not dolls. They're yeah. <laughs> figurines. Yeah, I get, I get all For your shelf, yeah. Right. <laughs> Most of them I got, actually, from subscription boxes. But, oh. um, but yeah, it, it's just, like, a lot to to catch up with when you try to enter uh, these these nerd worlds. Yeah, and then there's there's another uh, DC movie that's coming out uh, next week on a, a Friday that you, that you have to c- catch up on. I haven't even thought about it. what is this that you're talking about. Yep. It's the Lego Batman. Movie, oh yeah, exactly. okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, this Very has the potential details. to be the one of the best uh, DC movies <laughs> in recent yeah. history. One of the best Batman movies. Yeah. Probably. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is it, is All it next... Will Arnett? Is that who's doing the voice? Yes. Yeah. Is it fresh off of his uh, his performance in the the the, the Lego movie, yeah. the, one of the best parts of that movie. Yeah. Made, yeah. His own spinoff. So I'm looking for. I'm, the, next Friday is gonna be a great day for movies, man. Uh, John what else Wick is Two. Okay. Oh. John Wick Two and the the Lego Batman movie. It's gonna be a double feature day. But which pet of his is going to be killed in this movie? Ah. Uh, I mean, I guess well, you have to the, do a the, cat because the dog died in the first one. Uh, but then he got a new one at the, no, I can't watch at the end of the first one. He had the, <laughs> yeah. the little uh, dog. What, have you you seen John Wick? I'm not sure, right? I, I haven't. haven't. No, I haven't oh. either. <sighs> but I hear lots of good things. So yeah. I, I, it is on my list. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the, the, of, the list. Of recent movies that involve dogs dying, John Wick is the one that I might watch. I'm definitely it's not watching a dog's him. purpose. <laughs> Uh, oh. oh, I cried through that trailer, so there's no way that I can even watch that movie. <laughs> I cried through the footage of a dog nearly being, being forced drowned. Into <laughs> oh, the drowning dog, that, that yeah. yeah. And apparently that scene like doesn't even play out that way in the movie. I haven't seen the movie, but it's, yeah, he's like uh, rescuing like his yeah, it's like his there's owner n- policeman there's no guy. Scene of because he's like a police submerged. dog. Yeah, at that yeah. point. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I, I, I would not be checking that out. There's a, a movie called Wiener Dog that looks like a much better version of that I story. I was supposed to go see that. Uh, is that a Todd Salons movie? Yeah, because when you yeah, because you you've mentioned Todd Salons. Right, uh, when you were telling me about Greasy Strangler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Greasy Strangler. Uh, for, Still, I haven't seen it yet, Zach. See, that's, that's an inside reference for the people listening or watching the podcast. I've been trying to recommend this movie, but I can't get anyone to watch it. Oh, I'm totally uh, going to watch it. I just couldn't watch it last night before yeah, the timing for today. Issue. But uh, I'm, I'm interested. I'm into it. I'm going to okay. watch it. It's we, very John Waters, uh, which I love John Waters' yeah. weirdness. So Subversive. Yeah. yeah. As one of the um, people from red letter media the youtube channel they were viewing it is like is it one of those weird sex movies like i guess kind of (laughs) kind of sort of like it should be playing at the music box where like all the midnight movies or something i feel like that would work well there are half naked men um in bad sh- in you, poor shape you <laughs> you haven't you haven't <laughs> got it <laughs> yeah you haven't got it far enough oh, into the God. movie there's whole naked movie. i was just looking up like after i watched the trailer there was like a whole like best moments or whatever like three minutes of like clips and i I, I went for yeah. it and uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you want an indicator front- yeah. yeah full frontal probably uh hopefully prosthetic nudity scrotal horrific yeah. Um, yeah, if you want an indication of how crazy the movie is, just look at the album cover of the soundtrack and it'll yeah. tell you all you need to know. Um, I'll take your word yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but moving on. <laughs> on that note, uh, 
Valentine's Day is on the 14th, like it is every year. Yep. And uh, there is a speaking uh, of there's a Jap- <laughs> speaking <laughs> of nudity. Uh, there's a, a, a Japanese novelty store called a Village Vanguard uh, that, that's uh, putting out some new products in preparation for the big day. Uh, right. a chocolate chocolate organ or body organ and poop silicon molds hey. molds that hmm. you can use to create a uh, poop shaped chocolate and jelly molds That's and uh, stomach stomach and heart molds yeah it's uh, <laughs> isn't that uh, something that you want to buy for your significant other a big uh, chocolate mold of, uh, of your poop. stomach or a physical heart or a coil of poop uh, yeah, especially, you know, if you were a doctor or something, you could use those all year round and just have themed parties. <laughs> yeah. So is exactly. the heart, like, I'm trying to follow the theme here. Like, is the heart mold in the shape of an actual human heart or is it just like the car? Like anatomical heart? heart yeah. Or, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. It's all human organs here. Okay. People. So I guess it, it, I guess there, it follows a pattern. So it's like you have the heart, then the stomach, then what comes out of Lungs. the stomach. You could play a really, really fun game of Operation, it sounds like. <laughs> a tasty yeah. game. Yeah. Don't touch the sides. And <laughs> you can eat it when you pull it out. Yeah. Yep. Um, the loser gets the poop. That's, that's the rule. Um, <laughs> but nobody loses because the winner, they all Tony. taste the same. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, nobody loses. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I will not be uh, eating a uh, poop mold of uh, chocolate nuts. It's not all in me. your head. It's not actual. <laughs> I have I have uh, a trauma from uh, Caddyshack related nightmares of <laughs> chocolate slash. That was just a candy <laughs> bar. <laughs> yeah, I think they revisited that joke on uh, the Fox show The Mick. They had a recent episode at a country club where they just blatantly stole that whole routine, throwing a candy bar in the pool. That show. It's not bad if you if you've ever watched It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's it's pretty much her character from there, uh, being uh, forced to look after some rich kids. Fish out of water. Wackiness and a, a D out of water story, as it were. But yeah. So yeah. So uh, anything else uh, interesting happen to you guys or yeah? Uh, I went and saw Adam Ant <laughs> on Tuesday. That <laughs> I was saw really that fun. He, that he was uh, cool. performing. Yeah, it's my third time seeing him. He came like a couple years ago uh, to the Cubby Bear because apparently that used to be a really punk venue. Um, well, and then, a long time ago. Yeah, and then he played the first show at Concord when that place opened. Um, and then this time was just at the Vic, and that was really, really cool. Although his guitarist had just died like the week before when they started wow. out on tour. Yeah. So it was a very like somber kind of, uh, event, but you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. He's like my all time favorite. So it's, I had to, I had to go. He's soldiered through. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Tove Lowe is going to be performing at the, the House of Blue. She's the Swedish, like, pop singer yeah so we should gonna be we should all get high all the time and, and go see her. <laughs> yeah so that's her hit song <laughs> yeah Very that's smooth. that's really all i know from her i think yeah i mean yeah, I, I yeah um she's on a lot of like edm type of yeah music, so. okay where where she probably does not get the credit for being the artist on the song is, yeah it's always seems to featuring, be featuring. Which, which is weird it, it always takes me back to the fact that uh, Rihanna, Rihanna. Rihanna won Best Male Artist at the Video Music Awards <laughs> because of her, her collaboration yeah. with yeah. Uh, I forget whatever the producer's name, uh, Calvin Harris. But uh, yeah, so I I don't have any uh, uh, concerts to report. I'm I'm not hip in that way. <laughs> I do have tickets to go see the Zombies in uh, is it March or April? I think April. Yeah. Cool. Nice. That'll be fun. I'm Hopefully a fan. If they're not like totally on their deathbed or whatever. <laughs> I mean, that'd be appropriate for zombies, right? Right. Oh, true. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> they don't die. All right. Um, so yeah, I think I think uh, we don't have any more news tidbits because I, I want to stay away from the Donald Trump stuff. Uh, yeah. Would you happen? Who to do be you guys? Uh, who, who do you guys no. got in the Super Bowl? 
uh, tomorrow. Oh, Falcons I'm, gonna, I'm just going to root Falcons because sure. uh, underdogs, right? So Yeah, go Falcons. <laughs> My, yeah. I have family in Atlanta, so I'll go with that. Allison, Allison, that is how people like Donald Trump get elected. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Underdog. Uh, no, yeah. but I mean, like, Falcons, evoke, this is like their only their second time in the Super Bowl, right? I'm rooting for them, too, actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just sick of Tom Brady and the Patriots, and, like, yeah. Robert Kraft is, like, a Trump guy, and, yeah. and that whole stuff, and, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Don, uh, t- Tom Brady is a Trump supporter, so yeah. yeah I, th- that's one of those that I wasn't shocked to hear about. Ah, like, um, uh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> but yeah, um, as we tend to do towards the end of these podcasts, Tony, do you want to uh, touch on uh, the big wrestling show from last week? Oh, big wrestling. Did you watch any uh, of the Royal Rumble uh, last Sunday, Allison? Uh, I do not care for wrestling, so no. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, if you want to show me some old footage of Jake the Snake and the Hulk and all that stuff. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Great, but I don't I don't keep up with what's going on. Randy Macho Man Savage. Savage, yes. <laughs> well, the, the the only thing that you really need to be aware of is that a lot of people don't like this guy named Roman Reigns and okay. happily he did not win the Royal Rumble last week so <laughs> no but he was the uh out of the 30 people that uh came out for the uh, for the Rumble he was the last one to come out and yeah, people and were expecting someone else and they were yeah. not happy when his music started playing yeah <laughs> so if you if you want a I don't know how much you'll learn from this but if you want a, a good kind of entry point to the mood of the wrestling uh, fan base you should just look up there's a youtube compilation of uh uh people reacting, reacting. to the number 30 uh entrant in the royal rumble because uh, okay. uh everybody's expecting a f- there's a few a different surprise. people that people were expecting like to be surprise entrants and they were not pleased with who actually came out uh i so have you, one wrestling yeah. question uh sure. that Go kid for. from the real world uh the, the miz. miz is yes. he still a wrestler yeah yes he is okay how does he, he do does he, do people he like, was like him? number tw- was he like number 12 or he was, he was in like, there in, pretty like, early he's actually like he it's weird. He's had like a, an interesting arc to his career because he he was like, if you watched him on the Real World, he's a, like a huge fan of The Rock, and he was always yeah. just like he doing poses much, and yeah, he always yeah. had like a wrestling persona in on yeah. the Real World. Yeah, so he, he got into the business through the competition called Tough Enough, and he was, from what I hear, is that he was like mercilessly bullied, just pretty much for being oh, a, yeah. a fan. And getting and making his way into the show, huh. so he had an interesting arc. Like he got to a point where he won the championship, and like for years until kind of recently, he was just a guy in the background who wasn't really Mid-tier. doing much. Interesting. Yeah, and now he's right. having a renaissance where like he's back towards the forefront of the show, and he's doing. I great am very work. entertained by uh, the Miz. I like yeah, he's the, doing he's, great he's, work he's now. Good talker. He's a. He's very good at, at being like an irritating heel because he's such a, you know, a, a cocky, you know, douchey guy, and that that yeah. plays into his character. Yeah, he you know, as I, as I'm sure you remember from from the real world. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, he, he's <laughs> oh, yeah. really leaned into that. So he's his character now is basically like this person who's a delusional Hollywood a lister, and uh, he, he he uses that as much as he can. Yeah, he's the marine. Battery's the... dying. <laughs> All right, but yeah. I think I think we're about ready uh, to wrap up. Unless you had any other things you wanted to touch on uh, before we left. I don't. I am actually about to go get my hair done. So All thanks right. for having me on, you guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Do you have anything you want to plug, social media, or anything else for the people listening or watching? Oh, well, um, so I still sub on Chirp Radio, the Chicago Independent Radio Project. I just did an interview with a local group called So Pretty, and that should be up on our podcast section, um, uh, I want to say, at the end of this month, so like February 28th or something like that. Um, So keep an eye on that, and I'll be doing hopefully more local band interviews that'll be coming up in this 2017. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. All right. 
Tell I want to. I want to know what uh, Allison's what she's gonna go for in terms of her hair. Oh, she's I'm gonna. gonna uh... I'm, I'm going back to red. I was. I had red hair about uh, six years ago. Uh, cool, both I my grandmas that. had red hair. Yeah. Well, you know, hey, you'll see it now. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I got a lot of compliments back then, and and I don't know. It's hard. Red is hard to upkeep. Um, oh, it yeah. just fades really quickly. Yeah. So uh, okay. it gets we'll an see. orange tinge at some point. I, yeah, I yeah, it gets a little brassy, <laughs> is how they right. say. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. I just need a change. I've been blonde for the last six years, so uh, I need something else. <laughs> yeah, I've been really. like every hair color that's like except for like blue and green or something. So that's um, next. Yeah, eventually. I don't know. Is that appropriate in your thirties? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as you dress like a woman, then it, you'll, you'll be fine. Ah, nice. Bring it all full circle. Call all right. Back, full circle. <laughs> all right, Tony. Uh, what are your social media details for everybody? To uh, at up? Anthony Hoffman on Facebook and Twitter. At Anthony Hoffman and on Instagram. Just you can find me at at Tony Hoffman Chai. That's Chai spelled C A H I. That's Chicago. Tony Hoffman Chai. All right. And I'm on Twitter at Zach from Chicago. That's Z A C from Chicago. Uh, I'm on YouTube, youtube.com slash Zach Hughes. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Frustrated Grad and on YouTube at youtube.com slash Frustrated Grads. And check out our Facebook page as well. Um, also, uh, listen to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. And remember, if. Uh, you only see the 10 most recent episodes on the iTunes feed. Anything prior to that would be on the YouTube channel in video form. So that's it for this episode of the Frustrated Grad Podcast with our very special guest, Allie Kay. So <laughs> thanks for watching. If you're watching, thanks for listening. And that's all you get for today. Go Falcons. Bye, guys. Woo -woo. <laughs> Arden, so I wasn't at the forefront of the uh trend but you were also nine <laughs> yeah that yeah, doesn't mean i couldn't appreciate <laughs> comedy about nothing like the contest and what that meant and oh i i knew <laughs> because oh, i good. i was one to ask questions and it's like wow. like master of your domain what does that mean <laughs> yada 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 Hey, yada yada, the best part. Well, I talked about the dinner. All right. <laughs> this is, not this is all flying over Allison's head. <laughs> this is not a Seinfeld podcast, but I, I do have a Seinfeld podcast I can recommend if you want to do a catch up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this uh, this week we're talking about things other than Seinfeld. Uh, a lot of stuff is going on in the world. A lot of stuff uh, a few grads might have some opinions about. Um, the one question that I have to ask right now is, is Allison dressed like a woman? Very good uh, question. Very important. Question. Appropriate. <laughs> Very what important. The, uh, the latest headline I woke up to was hashtag, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean, dressed like a woman? Uh, I mean, I think know? it's a mandate from uh, our, our our wonderful president, the leader of the free world. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, all the women that are responding are showing him what dressing like a woman means because they're showing pictures of themselves in their astronaut uniforms, yes. in their police uniforms, in their firefighting uniforms. So, yeah, yeah I think it, it applies to way more than what he thinks it means. Yes. Yeah, I would love if all of the uh, women staffers in the White House just walked around and asked astronaut suits so like well this is what you said sir i'm dressing like a woman oh did you see that photo uh that was going around from like what was it sweden or whatever like the the leader of sweden is a woman and she had all yeah. of her like uh female counterparts around her signing a document about like environmental stuff and okay. it was in direct correlation to that picture of trump signing the thing with all the guys standing around about the yeah it's uh, great timing for the yeah. <laughs> synergy right uh, but yeah, um, there's. I'm just trying to think. Like, does he mean like, like pantsuits, or does he mean I, like? I think no, he I'm pretty specifically sure. is outlawing I think he means like a pants. skirt or a dress. Oh. Like yeah. women should not wear pants or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. He he's of that mindset because that's well, yeah. Yeah, I I think he's looking for the anti-Hillary in his uh, for everybody in his immediate vicinity. He he wants. Uh, you may know that our president is a fan of grabbing them by the pussy. So easier access is preferred. Right. Every, like every day, like when 
I get on Facebook or Twitter. It, 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 I just get so, I, I even get like a little physically just sick. Like my, my, my head starts to hurt whenever I have to see like what new horrible thing. I think we lost that are done to destroy like international or international relations and d- domestic relations. <laughs> yeah, it's make it stop. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's one of those situations where you say, "I'm genuinely never bored, but I wish I was." <laughs> like this is, this it's, is very it's like scary. he doesn't. It, it's clear that he doesn't care about breaking any laws or, you know, pissing oh, on no. the constitution. No. So I mean, so now you, you might also know that he's a, a fan of piss. If if the documentation <laughs> is to allegedly, be believed, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. allegedly. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, I I I I like w- where people are taking the whole dress like a woman thing because it's it's ridiculous and mm. it needs to be uh, thrown back in his face. I was going to say, like, no wonder, like, Fox News is, like, his favorite news station. I mean, they have a lot of the same dress codes there. They have the same dress code, and they have... Yeah. It's like they have a cloning machine uh, The Fembox. Yeah. The Stepford Park. It's like, okay, blonde. You have a minimum of this height. Okay, push print. Yeah, we we, we lost Megyn Kelly, but we can replicate her, so... Right. We lost Megyn Kelly, who is moving into... I mean, I guess it's daytime, so it's arguably taking, a more legitimate position. Uh, taking job from Tamron Hall. Yeah, uh, wasn't that bullshit? Yeah. Yeah. Chicago's own Tamron Hall. Right. Uh, yeah. Let's would, just, replace. Just whitewash all of the Today Show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, this is Trump's America, so you have to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you have to make the television uh, pleasing for him if he just happens to flip through at 9 o'clock in the morning to NBC. Like, oh, okay. I'm alright with this. Even though he's he, he has had his own feud with Megyn Kelly, but still the image is more pleasing to the eye, I'm assuming. I just, I'm interested to see just how successful this is going to be because, you know, she's a very like a divisive, you know, personality yeah. and and, and, and like daytime TV, especially like on in that sort of arena in that time slot, is yeah, very sort of like choice. soft and very, yeah. you know, co- cooking segments and celebrities and stuff. But, and, and to have like her own political type yeah, show it, there, it, it's odd outside of the format of like something where it's like a panel discussion, where it's like okay, she represents a view in a group of others. Seems like she's just been given a spotlight like in the middle of this what was a normal like general news program but i guess i'll let's see how it turns out as long as i can still see kathy lee and hoda get <laughs> shit faced on drunk. television <laughs> box at 10 drink. o'clock then yep. then uh i'm still okay but well, hey guys <laughs> The Super Bowl is uh, tomorrow. Aren't you oh, excited, it, it big just, football fans? Yeah, just sports ball. Me. Woo. Yes, and <laughs> it, that was a, a great transition. And <laughs> it, it reminded you. me of something. The last time that uh, Allie was a guest on the Frustrated Grad podcast, it actually many, was... Many, many moons ago. <laughs> yeah, it was like six or seven years ago. It was actually yeah. on Super Bowl Sunday. And, oh, that's right. And none of us had realized it. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. That's how much of nerds, sports fans nerds, we are. Nerds, Even nerds. with Dale, yeah. who was just like out of the three of us, he's the person who's most into sports because he actually plays basketball yeah. and stuff. But oh, yeah. none of us realized it was actually Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, we wonder why it was so empty on the streets when we took our uh, cover photo in front of the slow children playing sign. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> everybody was inside uh, eating Super Bowl food and, and watching the game. Yeah, yeah. eating the nachos and uh, things like that. So I take it neither of you are going to be watching the Super Bowl tomorrow. So uh, I have a list of um, of some alternative programming uh, tomorrow. There will be uh, right. various uh, marathons and uh, other distractions that the uh, other networks will be airing. Huh. Uh, like yeah. the Puppy Bowl? Of, uh, obviously, that's uh, airing from uh, between. I think during um, from three time, to oh. th- yeah, from three to five actually. So okay. before this, Ooh, this Super Bowl right. on Animal Animal Planet. Yeah, that's uh, when walking... you record it and then keep watching it instead of the game. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm going to be watching it 
Super Bowl. Right. Um, um, the you Walking would. Dead is airing a. <laughs> I would. The Walking Dead is airing a marathon from eight in the morning until four in the morning the very next day. So oh, cool. if you love your Walking Dead, there need to catch up on the uh, current season. Right. Uh, there you go. Uh, BBC America is airing a Star Trek marathon, the original show, from nine a.m. to eleven in the evening. Ooh. Captain Kirk, Spock, uh, and the Bravo, rest. The, re- the Real Housewives of Atl- Atlanta marathon from three until nine. I would rather watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that's where <laughs> I'll be. <laughs> up, yeah, up, yeah. Oh, Zach, Maybe not. Talk. <laughs> uh, Comedy Central. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Frustrated Grab Podcast. Uh, today's episode is a special episode because I'm, uh, as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, writer Tony Hoffman, but I'm also joined by a, a friend of ours, went to school with us. Human being, Allie Klein. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for coming. All right, so um, for anybody who is new to the podcast, uh, I will reiterate a point that I've made in the past. But the Frustrated Grad podcast is about more than just being a frustrated grad. It's about the opinions, the feelings, the thoughts, and the lives of a few people who happen to be frustrated grads i thought it was all just about complaining about you know student loans and lack of jobs and living a depressing disappointing life post college i mean of course that's part of it because that's part of the life of a frustrated grad but we have more uh uh more to say to the world than just i'm mad (laughs) so well, yeah. that is su- surprisingly good. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, okay, before we get into the meat of the show, let's talk about uh, Allie name shaming the podcast. <laughs> She's like, is it still called the Frustrated Grad Podcast? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're almost 10 years out from, from having graduated. <laughs> so, I'm like, what, where do you graduate next to you? Like, what, what is the level of frustration? I, I guess. Mean, I mean, this I will extended, be the name of the show when we're senior citizens. I mean, I extended it uh, beyond the initial premise because I was, I I continued to be a grad because then I was a frustrated grad student and then I was once again a grad, uh, and and proceeded the life of frustration from there. But the thing I said, like I said, Tally on our text, but we'll always be grads, so. It's not a status that ends, per se. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I mean, sometimes I wish I could turn in uh, (laughs) my degree and get my money back, but I'm still a grad. (laughs) I guess I could go with I'm still frustrated because my husband is still a student and he's still pursuing his bachelor's degree. So. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, it's it's a lifelong process. When you stop Especially learning, so, yeah. <laughs> when you stop learning, you can stop being frustrated about it. But to kick off the show, that that's our our symbol to <laughs> kick off. Ignore my answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you have to turn the tape over, sir? <laughs> Your it's answering digital. machine. All right. Okay. <laughs> Like I, I was worried there. Or oh, my thought, voicemail. Better. Yeah, I thought some. Uh, I thought George Costanza was gonna run in and try to switch out the tape before you heard it. Um, but you didn't hear the greatest American hero thing. So. Yeah, believe it or not, Tony isn't at home. So leave a message after the beat. Where could I be? All right. That's actually one of the only Seinfeld episodes that I've watched the whole way through, and I get <laughs> How made fun of for that all the time. <laughs> Yes, and then we'll continue on this episode. How dare you, Allie? I'm sorry. It is American treasure. I've started Curb Your Enthusiasm, though, so I'm I'm, I'm sort of. Okay, that's like like advanced time, Phil, so I guess I'll give you some credit for that. I didn't start watching Seinfeld until, like, it was in syndication and, like, the reruns and stuff, so don't feel too bad. Yeah, I watched it. I mean, that's probably where I completed, like, I've seen every episode at this point. 
But like when Seinfeld was on prime time, everybody else in my house was watching Mar- uh They're going with uh, We're the Millers, the Jennifer Aniston, uh, Jason Sudeikis. Uh, Weird pull, comedy but okay. Opus. From uh, 155 to 440, followed by a South Park marathon from 440 until 10. Hey, there we go. All right, that's, yeah, that's yeah. better. Uh, do you any, any of you guys get Comet TV? No. I don't even it. know what Comet TV is. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a network that I also don't get. But okay. if you do, I, I think it's it's one of those, like, if you have, like, HD TV, but you don't have cable, it's one of those, like, sub channels oh, okay. thingies. Oh, one like of those a, like n- number two, this, like exactly two five dash two or whatever. whatever. Yeah, but Comet TV they're airing a, they're airing a Mystery Science Theater three thousand marathon. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome! I, I would love to watch that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Um, there's a there's a streaming service. I don't know if it, it's not Comet TV, but there's one of those services that you could just get free channels. I know there's uh, one of those that has just a Mystery Science Theater. 3000 channel i guess they're following that i guess they're following that um pattern i think it's called pluto.tv something like that yeah but but yeah so it's nice to see that on something maybe that i could find on my uh i need that but yeah esquire is going with a parks and recreation marathon from three uh in the afternoon until four in the morning the next day well they (laughs) are always playing Parks and Recreation, so I don't think it's really anything yeah, special. Yeah, not like, different from The little bit game. that I've seen of Esquire, it's always Parks and Rec <laughs> reruns. Uh, Freeform is going with a couple of Harry Potter movies, The Half-Blood Prince, followed by Deathly Hallows Part 1 in the evening. This could be my, my chance to finally get into those movies. I tried, but it just, it, it, it just hasn't clicked. And you yeah, call yourself a nerd. <laughs> She's a nerd for other things. It's too much. Yes. He's got too much else going on. Can't just lump like when, in. When you're obsessed with you something, you gotta stuff it all. <laughs> in. <laughs> it's not enough uh, time. The kid, in the, day. the kid and bowl, uh, from three until five on uh, FXX, the oh. rival to the rival. puppy bowl. Right. Yeah, okay. it started four years ago, I think. See, now I feel so, like they should just put the puppies and the kittens together. Now that would be like this, more like the Super Bowl. It's kind of like the Army Navy game. They, It'll be more Navy. bloody. <laughs> no, yeah. they're little babies. They wouldn't hurt each other, really. No. He, you, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that one bad boy in a group of kittens. He's going to be the, the rebel. <laughs> but yeah, kid, kitty bowl, yeah. that sounds more of my alley. And uh, there are there are more and more and more different uh, alternate uh, programming uh, choices right. there on almost all the networks. So I'm not gonna not gonna go through them all, but those are just some of the notable ones. I mean, I know that like you know marathoning stuff when you're up against a big television event like the Super Bowl is waving a thing. the white flag kind of. But do you think that like that's they're also trying to incorporate like so binge watching of like a Netflix or like an HBO you know uh, kind of thing? Yeah, that's you know, usually we... my type of choice. Yeah, yeah like so binge watching is like a big thing now. So it's like cable trying to get us back into paying for cable like with <laughs> trying yeah. to do like marathon things. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird cuz it's like they want to pull you away from those things where you can binge whatever you want, but it's like, well, if you can't beat them, join them. Let's just play a yeah. marathon of this this thing they like. Right, like everybody loves Harry Potter, right? We'll just play the shit out of that. It's more Harry Potter. Yeah, you know what's great about Harry Potter is uh, the fact that it's a never-ending what fourteen-hour story. That's the way people like to consume it. Not on their, not on demand. <laughs> Like mm, that that sounds more like a chore than a uh, yeah. With all the some of the good stuff edited out and you know yeah. commercials. And, I mean, I'm wondering how yeah. much it, they actually have to take out of Harry Potter. I wouldn't be the expert, but I, I'm assuming the later there's no ones nipple more. Uh, exposure or anything like that. Like, oh, Hermione, We're put your clothes. Hermione on. Nude <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you guys excited, uh, at least for the Super Bowl halftime show this year? Uh, Lady Gaga, Gaga, gogging it up, gogging if it you up. will. Um, I guess job. I would like to see what her outfit's going to be, because that's always pretty legendary. But uh, I don't know. I, I play a lot of Lady Gaga at the weddings that I DJ. <laughs> and that's pretty will. much the exposure face. that I get. So, But are you playing anything new from Lady Gaga? 
Well, no, not really. Exactly. The newer stuff is not quite as dancey, I want to say. I don't know. I haven't really yeah. gotten around to hearing all of it, but yeah, it's a uh, weird. No cuts from the the Tony Bennett Lady Gaga <laughs> duet album. <laughs> no, not unless we've got like a really diehard fan who wants that to be like her first dance or something. But <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I thought that was a weird pull. I'm like, oh, Lady Gaga, I is it. What two thousand seven, mm-hmm. or whenever she came out, it just feels like that's like one of the most, the one of the odder choices. Like even somebody like Prince, when they had him perform, was like okay, he's he's, he's got not a whole at the catalog fo- yeah he's just... not at the forefront of music, but he can has a deep catalog to pull from. But it's like and he's a talented musician. Yeah, it's like you pull Lady Gaga. It's like okay, what is her? single currently right now, yeah, it's like not... okay we have one to one and a half albums of songs that people would want to hear so it's, it's a strange time to be picking her but you know what were some of uh, what were some of you guys favorite uh uh halftime performances in, in the the, the, I guess oh, the few that maybe history. i've watched <laughs> yeah right uh, mm. last um, year we had the uh glorious uh cold play bruno mars beyonce Nope. Uh, show. <laughs> yeah. Pass. Like, speaking of, yeah. like being out of touch. Like, hey, oh well, I mean, who can forget the cold. the Janet Jackson Justin Timberlake uh, debacle? I mean, that I was... I was watching that with my mother and my sister. in yep. Two thousand and four, and I remember when and that did they vomit their nachos. No, <laughs> no, but when when that happened, when she, when he, uh, Justin Timberlake pulled like that that part of her like top. Like I didn't say anything, and I was hoping that like nobody noticed what the <laughs> hell had happened, and like nobody really didn't say anything and kind of like moved on from that. But I knew exactly what the hell happened, and I remember like I, I think I went on like the internet on my dial-up modem and yeah. saw it, like oh yeah, people people they noticed that she broke oh, the yeah. internet before breaking the internet was a thing. Yeah. yeah, it was the boob that was so powerful that it even changed radio <laughs> she doesn't make any sense yeah but, but but do you guys even like remember like what happened before that because I, I remember it was like the last time they let mtv produce it okay. and i think what was it like it's too edgy God, it wasn't it was it was justin timberlake and it was like puff daddy oh. or who was i guess it was p diddy at the time um, who, can keep <laughs> yeah. up with that. who can keep and they, they were just it was a pretty shitty show up until that point, and Janet Jackson performed a little bit. She, could, she performed a little bit because she she had a new album that was coming out. Okay. And a month or two after that, and then that happened, and uh, yeah, uh, the radio industry uh, changed and changed a little bit with the uh, FCC. Um, yeah, I think that was the beginning of the stuff. exit of Howard Stern from the radio. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's it was weird, and it is it's odd that in all of that that the focus was on janet as if she was the only one responsible for that it's like well it's justin timberlake's song the, the lyrics go i'm gonna have you naked by the end of this song, <laughs> this song. and he pulled like, yeah. he did it right on cue no. <laughs> yeah like okay so he wasn't involved in that he had no knowledge of it sure <laughs> it, it only is the most appropriate this piece thing. of material that's designed to break away yeah 